Welcome to a Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Jim Simonetti. Welcome back, Jim. How are you doing, up, Paul? All right. I'm good. Yeah, it was a good morning's conversation with uh, Jim Leishman, wasn't it? I. Uh, it was very. It was very interesting. An, uh, uh, an older gentleman of the game, and uh, and maybe that's what maybe that's what the game's missing. A uh, Paul characters. Uh, like Jim Leishman and, and men of that elk from way back in the day. Uh, mm-hmm. Great to hear. It's great to hear the stories, isn't it? Well, he was a proper old school gentleman, wasn't he? Yeah. And he was talking a lot about how disappointed he was that um, players are unable to engage with the fans these days. Aye, uh, that that is the biggest disappointment. You know, when you look at all the supporters, uh, clubs. Uh, no, actually, not just the supporters, clubs and. In Scotland, but all over the world, mm-hmm. uh, it's just a shame that that there's no some way that these these players can can uh, in, in, interact. They could possibly interact in, interact now, Paul. Uh, we we clubs through social social media. It could be what everybody's doing now: Zoom calls uh, uh, over the internet. You know. I think there's been a wee bit of that. I just, you know, looking back to the supporters clubs comments that Jim Leishman mentioned, Jim, back in the day there used to be the, um, you know, the big binder at Celtic Park whereby Billy McNeil would ensure that first team players would attend the supporters clubs right. functions. And, you know, guys like Chris Morris, Peter Grant, uh, Paul McStay, Mark Avenny, they would all go to these supporters clubs functions. And they enjoyed it, Paul. And they, exactly, and they would have a, a drink with the, the fans, they would sing with the fans and there was definitely a connection there that has been lost and um, in relation to the big headline today that we're running with, it's uh, some of the stories in the and some of the news outlets in relation to James McCarthy, yeah. he's been linked alongside his um, Irish teammate Shane Duffy for a potential move to Celtic and we're hearing that obviously the biggest stumbling block and the thing that will prevent this from happening is his wages. I mean, he's been down in the English game now, Jim, uh, for Wigan, Everton, and Crystal Palace for a number of years. Yeah, he is a high, high earner, and you're looking at um, a wage that Celtic simply couldn't match. Aye, he, he are he, he, James McCarthy. He would uh, come to Celtic possibly in a heartbeat. Uh, he's injury prone. He's, he's, he's no injury prone. Sorry, he's been carrying a lot of injuries uh, over the period, and he he'll be he'll be well up there, around about the ninety hundred and ten uh, k a week. Uh, but could he come in and do a job for his Paul? Could he could he come in there and be an influence on the team? Do you think? I think he could. As a you know, looking at. Some of the injury issues that he's had uh, over the last few years, it's kind of, you know, stifled his progress a wee bit, Jim. Yeah. He's, a, he's a regular in the Republic Island squad. He's a Celtic man. Like you say, he would uh, join Celtic in a heartbeat. But unfortunately, when it comes to the point where you're on the kind of wages that James McCarthy is accustomed to, then it would be very difficult to do a deal. The problem I would have with, with a signing of James McCarthy's ilk is... We don't need another midfield player. No, which which brings me on uh, <laughs> again. You know, uh, we, we spoke yesterday. We spoke to uh, our, uh, our friend Kevin as well when I asked him, where, where exactly would you play a uh, Turnbull in, in midfield? Because that's that's where, uh, where strength seems to be at the moment. I think Is that, so. that complete midfield... And to get in there, uh, if you were asked to drop one player out of there to get him in, maybe the listeners and the viewers could uh, uh, put their comments in and who it would be. This is the thing. How are you going to dismantle any of the players at the moment? We've heard through social media a lot of people's opinions on who should make way for uh, David Turnbull, the new arrival from Motherwell, already. We're getting uh, loads of comments coming through via Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Welcome everybody to a Celtic State of Minds Bulletin. It's always great to get you involved. And a lot of these comments, we'll work through them. Um, 
it seems like an obvious one that James McCarthy's wages would be a stumbling block. But let's not forget that we can do deals with players who are based in England. We've just signed a Yeti who would have been on big wages at West Ham. We've got El Yanusi who's come in uh, on obviously big wages from Southampton. We won't be paying a hundred percent of those. And we were able to do a deal on Fraser Foster. And we've also done a deal, it would seem, with uh, Brighton for Shane Duffy. So it would be great once that one's announced. We would expect him to make his debut in the hoops uh, against Ross County, although it's not been officially announced yet, Jim. No, it's not. And, and maybe they're waiting till uh, after uh, the international duty. I'll take it, he, he, he's away with, he'll be away with Ireland, He's he? away with Ireland, yes. So they, they maybe be waiting till... So that's finished, and uh, he's back. He's back here, uh, and that will get announced then. But hopefully, hopefully, it's done. The deal's done, and he is. Uh, he's signed on the on the dotted line. Also, on top of that, I think what's important for Celtic, if and when Shane Duffy is announced is that we don't sell any of our current centre-halves. I know that um, Christopher Ayer has his um, critics out there, but I feel that Ayer with Duffy and Julian would be your first three picks at centre-half. El Hamed and the likes of then Beaton, etc. would then be back up to those three. Yeah, you, you, you want to keep as much in reserve as possible. You want, you want to keep uh, players there that uh, if, if things if things uh, go by the wayside with injuries, etc., you've got you've still got back up there. There's no there's not really any need to think along that line that if a player comes in, one must automatically go out, unless you're balancing the balance in the books, right enough, uh, which could be a big factor in it. Again, going back to your point, I know that you, you were speaking about the potential to play Turnbull elsewhere on the pitch. I think yeah. when you're looking at uh, Turnbull and where he'll, he'll be playing, you, we've got to look at you know players like Scott Brown and the age that he's at, Jim, and using him more sparingly. He's going to be involved in one way or another with every team, I, I would every lineup, I would guess. But he doesn't have to start every game. So then you're looking at perhaps Turnbull playing some games in place of Brown. You're then looking at in Cham sometimes his consist- consistency is questioned. If he's inconsistent, Turnbull will get games then. I think it's a good headache for any manager to have when you're struggling to fit a specific midfield player into the side because it means we've got a lot of quality there. Aye, definitely. It's a great... It's a great... Uh... It's a great situation to be in that you've you've got these choices, but I don't know if I'm still certain that Encham's going to still be here. Do you reckon he's going to be one of the big? We say the big three, the ones who there's been interest in Eduard, Ayer, and Encham. I believe we'll lose one of them. Yeah, I hope and pray it's not Eduard. Um, I think the one area of the park where we're well covered is midfield. Yeah, if there's any truth in the fact that we were interested in James McCarthy. And as you said earlier, you know we've heard that he, he would certainly be up for a move to Celtic, but it's not as easy as that. Then perhaps we are looking to ship it out one of the midfield players. Aye, and uh, it could be in Cham, could be. See if we go back uh, to earlier on in the season when we were sitting here with yourself, Paul, uh, Stephen, and myself. Stephen Mullen from The Rock. Stephen Mullen, aye. Stephen Mullen for the St Rocks. Uh, we we discussed we discussed on the very first uh, live uh, programme I had out for a match day mm-hmm. about Shane Duffy. Yeah. Uh, uh, being been a, a great option for us. We also uh, put out a wee message as well that Lewis Ferguson would be a good option. To mm-hmm. look at mm-hmm. again, I, I I like Lewis Ferguson as a player. I think Celtic could make a move for for Lewis Lewis Ferguson as well. So that there, there you go. You get you've got many options here uh, to look at. But regardless, it doesn't matter where he's he, he, his parents, he, his his father played or or whatever. We're talking about. Uh, the player Lewis Ferguson himself, mm-hmm. I think he he could come in and be a big part of the 
of the squad as well. I think the question was asked back then, Jim, um, which Scottish player, if you, if you were looking to bring in the best Scottish talent, who would it be? Playing in Scotland, uh, obviously there's a few yep. Scottish players playing elsewhere. And the suggestion was that Ferguson was one of those players. Yep. Around about that time as well, though, if I was to look at, right, you're bringing in one midfielder, because if we're not going to get rid of anybody in the midfield yeah. positions, I don't believe we need another one. But the big question for me would be, if you're bringing in Turnbull, he'd probably be, for me, a better Scottish talent than Ferguson. However, I take a point and I do rate Ferguson. Yeah. I would have no qualms about him coming to Celtic due to his dad or his uncle having played for Rangers. Absolutely no issues whatsoever about that. It's about results. Of course it is. It's about having the best players in your team. Yeah. And when you look at the backgrounds, even some of the players we've got in our first team, they were more than likely brought up as Rangers fans because they're from Rangers supporting families. I don't have an issue with that. No, it doesn't matter to us, does it? It, 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 does, it doesn't matter at all. But um, I think um, I think if Ferguson was to be considered and brought in, uh, I think him and Turnbull uh, could grow together and mature together, surrounded by the current uh, Celtic players. Just before we have a look at some of the comments, thanks everybody for getting involved. The bulletin yeah. really is all about the comments from Facebook, Twitter and YouTube and getting you involved. There's been loads of people contacting us on social media saying, when are you doing a phone-in show? We've no plans at the moment to do that because somebody would need to man the phones. It's hard enough manning the comments coming in, Jim. Yeah. So, yeah, but thanks for all your comments. Keep them coming and your suggestions as well. We're always looking to try and improve what we're doing with a Celtic state of mind. Uh, on Sunday there, we went out. There was five live broadcasts. And today, this is our second one. The first one wasn't Celtic related. We were talking about big, we were talking with rather big Jim Leishman, who is a fellow Pfeiffer and the Lord Provost. And um, if you want to catch up on that, then check out our YouTube channel because it's still on there as a video. So before we go to the comments, Jim, you want to make a, a little comment yourself in relation to one of our uh, recent guests who was on the show. Ah, uh, there's a uh, Michael Roy. Um, a who was here a week past Saturday. Uh, he, he's he been taken to hospital a wee uh, infection. Hopefully uh, he's he's okay. And uh, i seen his daughter put up a wee message. Uh, when Des came along, obviously, uh, he's suffering from cancer at mm-hmm. the moment. And uh, his life, one of his ambitions was to go on the... Uh, and talk about Celtic, and he came along, and we helped fulfil uh, that wee dream for him, and he loved it, and we all the people who watched him, all his friends, and all the people that he's helped through the years, uh, round about the the Coat Bridge area and further further afield, were delighted, and they all listened intently uh, when he was on the show. So we we send our good wishes to Erin. Uh, and if she sends it on to her dad, that although he was here 10 days ago, we haven't forgotten about him, and he's still uh, in my in my thoughts, and very much in my prayers. Absolutely, Jim, and uh, everybody watching and tuning in will be feeling the same way about uh, one of our own, you know, Celtic fans coming on to the Celtic State of Mind, you are welcome, get in touch, we're already talking to a few guys who want to come on the show, so that's brilliant. Gary Doonan, you're commentating via Facebook to say that the, the Leash interview was tremendous, well done guys. I've had the, the privilege really, the pleasure of being in Jim's uh, company a few times, Jim, because he's a local to me, uh, obviously living in Dunfermline myself, and he's been kind of omnipresent uh, throughout my upbringing, I remember the impact that he made. Uh, for the town, not just the team, but for the town, you know. And uh, when he left, or w- when he was forced to leave Dunfermline as a manager, uh, there was a march through the town. Uh, Stuart Adamson led the march. Uh, there was re- reported to be over 4,000 people marching the streets of Dunfermline in protest. He's a very popular character. He does a lot of sterling charity work as well. So he had some great tales about the likes of Wee Jinky and all that as well, Jim. Aye, he did. And uh, off mic, he, he was actually, when he was going, he said, oh, I meant to tell you a story uh, about wee Jinky. He says, well, what are I doing? Uh, and Jinky, he says, oh, look, I need, I need to leave you, John. I'm going to go up 
up the stage and sing a song. He sees me up there and they sang the old rugged cross, which uh, uh, I can just picture Jinky uh, singing it because he used to sing all the time. Eh? He loved his singing, didn't he? Oh, he, he absolutely, he absolutely loved it. And uh, when you were in his in his company, and he would just want to sing a wee song, it was it was magical. It was brilliant. So that was nice of Jim Leishman bringing that back, and also he he, he spoke about there and and. In the interview about how how proud he was to lead out in Fenlon, he says in the Jimmy Johnston Cup final. Mm-hmm. He never actually mentioned the the League Cup final, the Jimmy Johnston Cup final. Absolutely, that was yeah. brilliant. It was. It was a it was a poignant day that day, yeah. Jim. Very emotional day. Certainly was. Um, Gary goes on to say McCarthy's time is five years ago. Let's move on. Yeah, I think when you're looking at the kind of money that it would take to bring James McCarthy, 29-year-old James McCarthy, to Celtic Park, then yes, I would agree with you there, Gary. Um, it's going to be very difficult to get a deal done. Uh, the Duffy deal is done, uh, reminds us uh, from Jed Sweeney, who's commenting via YouTube. And we're just waiting, I think, on the the official announcement from Celtic. Uh, John McCauley would rather have a proper look at all the squad players before diving into the market for a player who has an injury list behind him. Yeah. What about Sorrow? Or even still play Ayer in there? There's been quite a lot of comments about Ayer playing in the middle of the park, Jim. We, we kind of posed that question to Stevie Mull another day. Stevie believes he would be less effective. Just because he's making the gallop and runs from the back, it wouldn't mean that you would have the same space to make that kind of progress from the midfield area. What's your thoughts on that? Could Ayer slot in there if necessary? He... For me, I, I when you have him in there because I don't think he he, he's, he has got the the speed to act in there. If if you're if you're going forward and then he's not going to be able to uh, really get back the way we would l- want him to get there. No, I I wouldn't. I, I'm I'm the same as Stephen. I when you have him in there, I'd have him at the at the uh, as one of the centre back roles. But then again, some people are saying. Maybe that's not the position he should be. Mm. So, again, it's open to debate, but I would have him at the back. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, there's also the the suggestion or the comments that have been coming through that you play him as a defensive midfielder, you know, just in front of the, the back two, yeah. be that as Julian and Duffy. But then again, somebody in the midfield is having to drop out to accommodate that, aren't uh, they? Uh, correct. So, uh, we're back to this three five two 5 mm-hmm. uh, formation again. In our heads and uh, and the thinking, we we, we can't have a uh, two players playing as a deep uh, in the three five two formation. Sorry, you can if you want, but in, only in my opinion, I want to have two of them sitting there. So at the moment that at the moment that needs to be Scott Brown mm-hmm. because we know Scott is no uh, is no got the legs anymore that that he used to have. So I wouldn't like two of them sitting in there. One. One would be Scott Brown. Now, we're getting loads of messages, so please keep them coming. Matt McGee, welcome to the show. You're commenting via YouTube uh, to say that never a Celtic player, so he doesn't think McCarthy's the boy that we need to be signing. Personally, as it stands, whilst we've not sold anyone, I don't think we need James McCarthy. I do rate him as a player. I like him as a player, Jim. I know he's a Celtic man. As a very, very young boy, he was at Celtic. Uh, but again, I don't want to get too sentimental about these no, things. Do no. we need James McCarthy? No, probably not. No, I, 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 I don't think so. Uh, I, I would. Uh, I think I said in a previous show as well that uh, that, that James would be for me at this stage in his in his career. Uh, the, the callers and the viewers there are, are correct that uh, a lot of injuries. Uh, 29 years of age we've got to move on for that Mm -hmm. a player that uh, he would reportedly be looking at as well is uh, Christian Atsu he's a winger so I don't know what the news is out there from uh, uh, the folks listening in Um, you've got uh, Cezanne Young as well I think we mentioned him about a week ago, we a couple did. of weeks back, Aye, left couple, back. A couple of weeks ago, I think we actually mentioned uh, the chosen one's name as well, that if he could do 
as a wee turn in there with him. Uh, the chosen one being obviously uh, Jose Marino. Um, if Cezanne could be a good choice, but there's going to be talk about all various types of players now and and where where we're looking at. I think we spoke the other day, Paul, and we said that we would be looking, or we, we as individuals and in our team in here, maybe four, four players to join to join the squad. So one was uh, centre back, which is Shane Duffy. Mm-hmm. We still uh, feel do we, if we go to a four four two, we need a right back. Uh, it's two, somebody else in the middle. It's three. And who, where, who and where would that fourth player be? Now, we asked the question yesterday, uh, could, if for short, could we could Turnbull drop in to the left-back position? Uh, he possibly could, because if Frimpong can go to the right-back position, then I'm quite sure that we could adapt and work to what we've got at the moment till we get to we get that left back that, that we're looking for. But there's a lot of good talk at the moment and let's make some of this talk happen. I think for me, looking at Frimpong and in particular the last two Aye. performances we've seen from him coming off the bench, it's yeah. got to be said. For he's not a right back. He's no. not an option at right back. He's definitely more of a an attacking player. Turnbull, what I would hate to see is I remember bringing in a young Bulgarian kid called Stylian Petrov and playing him at right back. That's right. And he looked murder. He actually looked terrible after taking months and months to get the deal over the line. And obviously we had to get uh, testimonials from Stoichkov and all that before we got him him in. And then my friend John Barnes uh, played him at right back. Your good friend. My good friend. I could be uh, speaking to John again sometime soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, And he played him at right back and it was a disaster for, for Stan. Left back's a difficult position to play. I'm no footballer, Jim. Um, but it seems as though we're actually struggling to fill the left back position. At the moment, the number three shorts, as I still call them, because I'm a wee bit old fashioned, um, are being held by Greg, Greg Taylor. Yeah. Um, but I still think we need another left back. The ball and golly situation hasn't actually been resolved because Lennon was asked about it the other day following the five game ban. And he says he's undecided at the moment as to whether or not he can be welcomed back into the squad. I think that's a very sensitive subject. We don't know what's happening there. Um, we still need a left back. Absolutely okay. still need to sign a left back. And if you're going to sign a left back, sign your first choice left back and then him and Taylor can fight it out to see who gets picked. But again, I'm, I'm much more in favour of three at the back, but you need the personnel to adapt depending on who you play. Absolutely. And in, in our favour... Uh, three at the back as well. Without a doubt. John McCauley, when will the Duffy deal get announced? Well, you know, a Celtic state of mind don't get fed any information directly from the club. So uh, we're relying on our own sources, of which there are a few, and obviously everything else that's happening and what's being released to the general public. So hopefully sooner rather than later, I'm pretty sure there's an issue with regards to the fact that he can't come to Glasgow at the moment. He's on international duty. There's COVID issues. Um, etc. But I think when he does get announced, it's going to be a very popular announcement, Jim. Oh, aye. De- def- definitely. And it, wouldn't it be good uh, uh, as well when we can look back and we can say, we, we actually mentioned uh, Shane Duffy here on the show and, and then he, he, later on uh, he becomes a, a, a Celtic a player. Not because he is, but he becomes a Celtic player and I think he'll be He'll be welcomed and he'll be accepted uh, with with open arms and the fans the fans will love him. I love again, you know, this is just showing my age, but I love looking back to the centenary season when we had that wee contingent of Republic Island players and when you then watched Euro eighty eight, you were keeping an eye Aye. on the Celtic players and you would be watching Ireland anyway and supporting Ireland. But I, I do like to have a, a wee contingent of Irish players in the Celtic team. Uh, and Big Packy and... Uh, Big Packy. And the penalty shootout, am I right? Ah, Romania. Yes, Romania, 1990 right. World Cup. Aye, I got a wee flashback there, right? Yeah, aye. Aye, absolutely. So I do like to have a couple of uh, Irishmen in the Celtic side, but again, that's me being sentimental. Uh, coming no in from... No, no 
We're a sentimental club, Jim. There's a few sentimental clubs in Britain. Celtic are one of them. I think Liverpool's got a lot of sentimentality about it as well. And I'm proud of that. Aye, and we're sentimental people, aren't we? Mm-hmm. And the uh, and we like we like good things uh, about our club. We like the indifferences about our club, and uh, we just love being being Celtic supporters. Uh, and on on that topic, there, hey, Paul, James Forrest, mm. he does get a lot of stick at times, doesn't he? Oh, he does. And I mean, I think he's. Uh, uh, run about the 401 appear- 405 whatever it is uh, appearances mm-hmm. um, how 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 much longer do you think James James Forrest can go and run about a 90 goals to date how much more do you think is left with James Forrest you've got a, a thing about is it the 500 the 500 club, club yes yeah um, a dozen players are in the club Scott Brown is slowly climbing his way up the, yeah. the list and that 500 club Jim every player in it's a legend absolutely Jinky's in it Tommy Burns Pat Bonner Paul McStay Danny McGrain Jimmy McMenemy Scott Brown I could probably name them all of a way you think about it so I, I believe already that James Forrest is a Celtic legend yeah now people will say oh you know it's a term that's used far too often far too freely James Forrest will be a one man, a one club man rather, a one club man throughout his um, Celtic playing career. I think he's fit enough and he's lived his life well enough that he can play to the age of, let's say, Scott Brown, 35, 36. He'll definitely smash into the 500 club. For me, he'll play more games for Celtic than what Scott Brown will because he started his career at Celtic. He made his debut as a young man. He'll score over 100 goals. He will be one of the most decorated Celtic players in our history, if you want to look at his medals. He gets a big, you know, he he really does get a hard time. And I would like to say that he's he's one of the most important players in the Celtic squad. That's a great testament to the young man. And it's it's fantastic the way you put that. And uh, I would... uh, I, w- I would say the same, you know, he's played under uh, the different managers, so everybody sees something in, in James. And, and this year, let's hope all the other fans out there that may have a doubt about him see that wee bit of special that's in him and, uh, and, and he long may he continue scoring goals. We'll see the goal he scored there. Um, who else Very in that special cell? goal? A brilliant goal, brilliant goal. And you think to yourself... That's the type of thing James Forrest does and often he does it when we need him most. Now we're just embarking on another European campaign and the European campaign that we're embarking on is a Europa League campaign yeah. and the draw has been made today. Uh, the Latvians Riga will be playing uh, Trey Fiore from San Marino on the 17th of September. The winners of that tie will be playing Celtic at home uh, in a fixture which is currently in the diary for the 24th of September. Interesting. Now... They're described, both teams are described as minnows, European minnows. But we're embarking on this European run. Who knows where it will take us? Hopefully to the playoff of the Europa League and then into the group stages. Aye. Because that's where we are at the moment, Jim. He's the type of player that if you're playing the group stages and if you're good enough to progress further, that will pop up with that type of strike when you need him most. uh, Before I come on to the European uh, comment there, uh, and you led into a, a excellent now. Um, you've got you look at James a. Forrest when he took that goal when he came off his stride, mm-hmm. and then he adjusted his feet from under himself to strike it. It was actually a very very good ball. Uh, sorry, a very good goal, a very good goal, and it was an important goal uh, as we've said there to settle things down. Mm-hmm. To let us get in at the break, come back out, readjusted, and go into a, a, a flown attacking a system. So he he helped with scoring that goal. And the, let's not underestimate that goal. That was a very very important goal for us, especially with everything that happened uh, last week. Into the European opponents, Riga, the Latvian, yeah, yeah. They were founded in 2014. So, uh, 
six years old. It was a combined a uh, a uh, couple of teams getting together there, um, but still he uh, never done anything in Europe in Three Fiora from San Marino. Whoever comes through that, Celtic should be able to handle any one of the two teams, Paul, uh, and it would take them off to the a potential Europa a League playoff round round about October the first, mm-hmm. which would mean for Celtic, due to the rescheduled uh, a Saint Mirren a game, which will be the sixteenth a, a September. It's saying here, so I don't know when the European one is. If it is the seventeenth, or that's going to be rearranged again. But I've got done as the sixteenth of September for the Saint Mirren game. That would means we're possibly possibly playing two games a week for a month. That would be Ross Con- Ross County, a Livingston, Saint Mirren, and then the potential a first round. Uh, so hopefully I, I'm writing that and uh, and what I've taken down. So it's going to be a busy, busy month, September, it is. October, isn't it? It's going to be a busy month at a state of mind studios, Jim, oh because goodness. I'll be here to cover every single game. Every game. And here's hoping that all the uh, streams work correctly, because well, um, well, you know, it's been Paul, a wee issue up to aye, now. Aye, uh, he, he touch food, hopefully our streams are going to he, he, okay, it seems at the moment, and if there is any issues, people uh, will tell you, it would be great. Um but there does seems to be a few wee issues in the Celtic uh, TV, no getting in fast, and it's mm-hmm. no it's no happening. So hopefully that gets sorted for all the fans out there as well, because it's important that they they are tuning in and watching the game. We don't want to uh, miss out on anything. No, absolutely not. With the virtual season tickets and the commitment yeah. that the Celtic fans have shown, you want it to be as smooth as possible, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. Now Tony Hutton is contacting us via Twitter to say it's a sad fact but we cannot pay the salaries that the players get in England. We're always wheeling and dealing, I guess, you know. That's the reason why Fraser Foster didn't come back, and that's why we've had to look, look elsewhere and bring in Barkas. And there's sometimes a deal to be struck, depending on how you can get a, a, a loan fee. And obviously we've been able to do that with, with Brighton with, with regards to Shane Duffy. So there's sometimes ways around it, Jim, but... Yeah. You know, if our English club goes toe-to-toe with us when it comes to wages, and I think one of the classic examples of that was uh, John McGinn, then there's no way we're going to get the man. We're not going to get the player. Gary Doonan, Facebook. uh, Welcome back. Gary Armstrong recently miles ahead of him in English football, and he wasn't a first 11 pick for us when he went. So I think looking at the comments, I think people realise that McCarthy has been a, a very accomplished player down south and he would certainly do a job for Celtic but I don't see that many Celtic fans um, who are desperate to see him coming up to yeah. Celtic Park Jim so uh, that would be what I'm getting from the comments today on Facebook, Twitter and also on YouTube and via Facebook we already have Turnbull, Brown, McGregor and Cham why would we need McCarthy and another midfielder that um, has been mentioned is Sorrow don't think we've seen enough of sorrow, have sorrow. we? Sorrow, David Bowie. Yes, great job. David Bowie, sorrow. We don't, we don't actually uh, see much of him. And uh, is he going to get uh, an opportunity? Or when do you think, Paul, he will get the opportunity? At what point in what part of the league, a cup, a European campaign... Uh, is somebody like Sorrow uh, going to get get a game? There's been a couple of discussions around what happens to guys like Sorrow, Tommy Rogic being another one. If you're not in that first team and you're not a young player, and by young I mean a development player, you don't get any games at all because you're you're very rarely going to be in action if you're not getting a game for the first team. Competitive games, yeah, you're not going to get them. But the the club will be organising uh, games to help the players. Uh, you get game time, mm-hmm. but it's a difference between isn't isn't a there's a difference between a uh, game time uh, and uh, competitively and game time and non competitive and that but we are a friendly being organised to get the players game time. The best game time as you can get is in a competitive game. 
Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. Declan McConville, how are you doing, Declan? Uh, people will be aware of Declan, who joins us when he can on a Celtic state of mind. I think he was last here for one of the games. And Declan asks, do you think we are needing guys like Duffy or McCarthy that know the expectation this season, similar to what Big Billy did in 88? I think you're going back to my mindset there, Declan, when I was talking about having a couple of the, the Irish guys. And when I think about that centenary team, it was the last, I always say it's like the last homegrown team that we had. And I know that we had a couple of Northern Ireland uh, caps in there with Anton Rogan and Alan McKnight. We had a couple of the Irish caps, uh, one of whom was Chris Morris, who was a Cornishman. Another one, Mick McCarthy, who was a Yorkshireman. But all in all, it was more or less a team made up of the home nations plus Ireland. Uh, we didn't have any overseas players, Jim. And often what happens no. is they know the club, they know the expectations. And I think there's maybe a, a reasonable point in what Declan's saying there. Yeah, he has got a, a reasonable uh, comment there. I think with Duffy coming in, I'm going to go back to James McCarthy again. I, I just, I can't see a place for James. Even even in the pool, not 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 that kind of wages that he he would be looking for, um, uh, possibly looking for. Sorry, um, I think we've got we've got players in there that will really want this league mm-hmm. to happen. Mm-hmm. You've got Neil Lennon. He's doing he's doing what he can to win this league. He'll do whatever he can. He's the guy in there that wants this as well. If you look at Neil Lennon, he's saying to himself, "I want to be part. I want to be part of Celtic history forevermore. I'm looking for that." He'll go the extra mile and whatever he can to help to get players in. Hopefully, with the mindset that what you're trying to put across there, Paul. You know, he he he's he he will do everything he can to get players in the mindset. This is a historical. This is a historical year. Kevin Graham. Kevin was in just the other day, Jim. Yes, he was. Welcome back, Kevin. I hope you're having a good day. You're commenting via YouTube to say, if Roderick and Encham go, then we would, then we would, two to balance, we would need two to balance the squad numbers. Scott Robertson also just signed a long-term deal. I would love to see McCarthy, but long-term, no loan. So a permanent deal he's, he's speaking about there. And Cham, you know, there's there's more reports in some of the outlets today to suggest that Southampton are interested right. in Cham again. He's a player I rate highly. It all depends on whether or not we're going to be offered something that we don't want to refuse. I'm not going to say that we can't refuse, Jim, but we don't want to refuse. So, you know, the kind of figures that quoted around the, about the £20 million pound mark yeah. for Encham, I think Celtic would accept a bid of £20 million to be honest with you. Um, but would they then buy another midfielder when we've just brought in Turnbull and we've got the untried and untested Sorrow as backup? I'm not so sure we would. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Would you Would you sell Encham? No, I wouldn't. You would keep him? I, I would keep him because I think... I'd keep him. He's the type of player, we've, we've seen flashes of his brilliance, but we've yet to see the best of Olivier and Cham. I think that if he was to get a run of games this season, um, we would see the special talent he can be. We'll remember him for last season's strike against Lazio. Aye. I think there's many, many more moments like that to come from in Cham in a Celtic jersey. Aye, I, I would agree with you. And, and as time goes on, and it's only as time goes on, uh, if they're still at the club that you see, you see them progressing, you see them becoming better, you see them becoming a, a more relaxed, you see them with the smiles in their face when you're winning, you, you, you see a special, special part of the team uh, forming, mm-hmm. but that takes that takes them all playing together on a week, week in, week out basis, and that's what makes a good team. That's what makes a good team, including the guys on the on the bench who are as important as the as the living guys on the park. Because you need to know, uh, as a manager, as a coach, that if I bring him, if I bring this guy on, he could make a he could make a difference in this game for me here. You've got to have that confidence in mm-hmm. your pool. Mm-hmm. 
We've got another five minutes to go. I mean, it's been a very quick bullet in 45 minutes, Jim. The the time just goes like that. Yeah. Uh, Keep the comments coming in. We'll walk through as many as we can in the next five minutes. Interesting comment from Free Speech for the Dumb. I don't know if that's a message to us or if that's actually your name. Duffy will give us a a bit of grit at the back. Well needed. We don't need McCarthy. I tend to agree with that. Yeah. I'm, I like I'm McCarthy. 100%. I think he's an excellent player. And, and see, that's uh, see, that's a genuine. Uh, obviously, I can't see the screen from here. See, if that's a genuine uh, uh, person or organisation. I think it's fantastic, Sen. I think that's fantastic. Uh, uh, but uh, not not to dwell on that. We get Duffy. Duffy, they're saying, is signed. We don't need to look at James McCarthy. Here's one from Gary. We are welcome back, Gary, um, on Facebook. I've seen you commenting previously. We don't always get a chance to go through every comment. That's the big no. issue. Uh, or we'd be sitting here for three hours. Who knows? We might just sit here one day for three or four hours, Jim. Probably on transfer deadline day. Aye. Can um, I make a wee suggestion to you, Paul? Sure. Maybe you could put it to the viewers and the listeners. Um, what if we do, uh, what if we were to do a lengthy show for charity? It could be 12 hours, could be 24. 16, tw- oh, well, right, 24 hours, different guests popping in and out, um, and uh, put a vote in to what charity they would like to do it to. Could be a good idea. Sorry, I've taken away from your we question. Could, we, could go, we could do a live broadcast for 24 hours yeah. for charity, Jim. Let's do it. Uh, make your suggestions. Who should we be giving the charity funds to? I think it's a brilliant yeah. idea. Superb idea. Gary Weir uh, via Facebook. A decent left back, and we will have had the best transfer window I can remember as long as Eddie doesn't go, that is. I think we did say that because we were obviously very disappointed after the um, Ferenc Varos result, Jim. But then a day or two later, we started saying, you know what, if you if you just focus on the guys we've brought in, so far, we've had a very, very healthy transfer window. Of course we have. Of course we have. And and here's here's something as well, Paul. We've we've had we've had a positive transfer window. There's always going to be talk about Celtic dragging their, their feet. That that's been historical with us, right? And hopefully that doesn't continue. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that doesn't continue. But it has been successful. So you look at that European game now. It's like a player. He makes he's made a mistake in the part. You've got to move on. You've got to move on for that. We've got to learn for, for where we went wrong. So that's in the past. We've learnt from it. We've got to look uh, to, uh, to the rest of the season now. We're hopefully getting this left back in and a couple of more signings in there. And I think everybody to be gelled together. Hopefully Edward doesn't leave, he stays then we go forward and we say, that's us, we're sorted. We're sorted for the time being. We're sorted for the time being. Let's go. Let's go together. Let's let's attack this the way the way we should be doing it. A few more comments before we I wrap did, up I'll for the day, on, Jim. Carry on. And KC65 Sunshine, I hope you're having a good day. KC, you're commenting. KC the Sunshine Band. Ah, that's right. What yeah. was the name of the big hit again? Oh, you hmm. tell me. I don't know, we used to sing it to the tune of Tony Watt, didn't we? Tony Watt, 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 was that a name? KC in the sunshine. Yep. Man. NCHAM's contract runs out next summer. If he wants to go, we must cash in. I think that's a good point because the club will always look at cashing in rather than obviously allowing the contract to run down and then taking a cut price deal or no no deal whatsoever. Uh, Mark McGeekin. I don't think we'll see the best of Olivier NCHAM at Celtic. Don't see him outing anyone long term in the midfield and staking his claim. I take the money again. When you look at how he has performed, you know he, he blows hot and cold. Will we see the best? Possibly not. Um, if we get offered twenty million, I think we're in a situation where I would expect the club maybe to to play ball. I, mean, I wouldn't deal. disagree with that, but I'd like to see him stay, uh, Paul, because I, I think he's a rare player. And we've also got. Stephen Ray coming in and uh, welcome back Stephen it's great to uh, hear from you and you're making a comment which says why would you play Turnbull at left back people are dancing around the elephant in the room that is Scott Brown so Scott Brown out Turnbull in but we're not dancing on anything 
uh, uh, at all. We're just uh, we're a- we're asking the question uh, what it would be. No, we're not saying to move uh, uh, Turnbull to left back. We're saying it's an option to to put him in there. No, no, he uh, keeps Scott Brown in the team. The the reason you'd put him in there is if at the moment we don't have a left back. If you, see if you go back and listen to Jim Leishman earlier on as well today, mm-hmm. they 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 had the ability that if you were a a left mid or a left winger back in the day or whatever you could slot back in a left back or right back or whatever in the field the guy made the, the comment uh, the other day there not to be too rigid move players run about to suit Let, if, if something happens players will go to be able to, to move about in the park into a position so it's no an elephant in the room to try and keep Scott in the team it's a suggestion it's a su- suggestion he could possibly play there for us until we're sorted. But we may be sorted this week or next week for the left back. But if we continue to play a three-five-two a formation, then we don't have an elephant in the room. We've still got this, the, the formation with Scott Brown in the centre of the mid as the captain and other players around about him. With the option for Scott to come in and out as the manager sees. Last comment of the day is coming in from Graham Diamond on oh, YouTube. Graham. And Graham has just reminded me of the name of the song I was thinking about. Give it up, KC in the Sunshine Yeah, Give it up. It would have to be him, wouldn't it? Yes. We spoke about a Graham a, a, the other day there. It was actually on, on players going on loan uh, and getting them in to, to playing. So that's good that he's, he's made a comment there. But uh, I, I don't think... Um, I don't think... Again, Graham is welcome to come back to the show, as you say as well. He might be part of the 24-hour marathon that we're just suggesting mm-hmm. uh, there. But I don't like that, that, an elephant in the room. I don't like that at all, about, uh, but we're captain. I don't I don't like that comment. But the person is more in, is entitled to uh, his opinion as, as I am, as you are, and anybody else in the show. Absolutely. Now, thank you. Thank you to everybody who's tuned in today and who's tuning in on a daily basis commenting on the state of my hair. That's brilliant. Well done. Thank you, everybody, for your comments. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. Um, so, Jim, it's been an absolute pleasure to be speaking to Jim Leishman this morning. I think it's We've right. got a few more guests coming in this week. We've got Edgar Summertime coming to join us on Sunday for an acoustic yeah. session. Loads happening on a Celtic state of mind. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on a Celtic state of mind. 